When upgrading node pools in a GKE cluster, you probably care about a few important things. Do workloads remain as available as possible during the upgrade? Can we mitigate risk with granular control of upgrades and rollbacks? How do we manage cost, speed, and the duration of an upgrade? In this episode, we're going to work through how to navigate these important questions when using the node pool upgrade strategies built into GKE. In GKE, there are two node pool upgrade strategies. GKE has surge upgrades, in which nodes in a node pool are upgraded in a rolling fashion. With surge upgrades, you can control how many nodes are upgraded at once, adjusting this to the disruption that your workloads can tolerate. GKE also has blue-green upgrades, in which all old or blue nodes are kept in the node pool during the upgrade as you validate your workloads on the new or green nodes. Let's start by reviewing the default node pool upgrade strategy a pre-configured surge upgrade. And we'll use an example node pool that has three nodes. The default node pool upgrade path will begin by creating an additional surge node in the node pool, one with the new version of the node. Once that node has completed creating and is ready, we'll briefly have four nodes in our node pool. Then the upgrade will begin the process of turning down one of the old nodes. This involves draining the old node so existing pods can terminate, coordinating the node so new pods won't be scheduled there, and then deleting the node itself. Here we can see the benefit of creating that new node, the extra surge node that temporarily brought our node count above the baseline. Its extra resources can now be allocated to pods that have to reschedule from the old node. This reduces the time it takes to get pods restarted and working. Of course, there are considerations when pods are moving from node to node. Like, how can we get pods to shut down gracefully? That is, how do we let them know they need to perform tasks and give them time to do so, like closing connections or flushing things in memory to disk? In Kubernetes, you can have workloads specify values for pre-stop hooks and a termination grace period in the pod spec. These allow you to define what tasks your pod should carry out before they shut down and give them a defined time to perform them. Because upgrades perform a drain, the containers in your pods receive a SIGTERM message, which allows for them to begin carrying out these tasks. Of course, workload availability is more than just how a single pod shuts down. It's about making sure you have enough pods running to carry out whatever your workload does. This means working through details like making sure you have enough pod replicas, and that number of replicas can scale up and down, making sure replicas don't bunch up on a couple of nodes using things like node anti-affinity, and defining rules around keeping a minimum number of replicas around at any given time using pod disruption budgets. GKE does interact with pod disruption budgets specifically, allowing to block an upgrade for 60 minutes should one be violated. But overall, these recommendations are not specific to GKE. In fact, you should consider these for disruption-sensitive workloads in any Kubernetes environment. With that said, once the pods have been drained from the old node, that node is deleted, and we repeat the cycle until the whole node pool is complete. The default upgrade strategy shows us how surge upgrades work in GKE. And while we just went through the default configuration, you can actually tune a couple of settings to best suit your needs. The first is called max surge upgrade. By default, this parameter is set to one. We saw this earlier in the default upgrade strategy when the upgrade started by adding one surge node above the baseline node count. If we were to set this value ourselves, for example, to two, during the upgrade, the node pool could surge above the baseline node count by two additional nodes. There are a couple of reasons we want to tune this. We may have larger node pools that we want to finish upgrading faster, so we want to increase the speed of new nodes being added to the node pool. Or we may want to ensure that it's worth the slightly extra cost to have spare resources to allocate to pods moving around during the upgrade. Now, on the other side of the coin, we have max unavailable upgrade as a tunable field. This is the number of nodes below the baseline node count that can be unavailable at any given time. In the default upgrade strategy, this value is set to zero, meaning that the node pool never drops below ready and available baseline node count. If we set this to one, the upgrade can turn down nodes at a rate that allows the upgrade to fall one node below the baseline count. By doing so, it helps us speed up upgrades by coordinating and draining nodes faster. So in this example, we left off with five nodes, two that surged above the baseline count. 
This means that our upgrade could now cordon and drain up to three nodes at the same time. The faster nodes are cordoned and drained, the more pods are moving around and being rescheduled at any given time. So again, this can be slightly disruptive for pods, but it does speed up the upgrade process. There's a lot of power in between these two settings with a lot of configurable outcomes depending on what's important to you. You could take a slower balanced approach, similar to the default configuration. You could turn down nodes faster than you create new ones, which optimizes for speed and lowering the cost of an upgrade. But this can be disruptive if workloads don't have available resources to reschedule to. Finally, you could create nodes faster than you turn down old ones. This optimizes for speed and spare capacity as pods move around. And there are also some protections built into these strategies. For example, when you set max surge upgrade to zero, you're protected against any temporary stockouts should the upgrade not be able to secure capacity as it adds nodes. There are a lot of different ways you can use these two settings. Surge upgrades give you a lot of control over the speed of an upgrade. And this is helpful, especially in scenarios in which you have large node pools that need to go through an upgrade. However, no matter what, surge upgrades are performed in a rolling fashion. The trade-off for controlling the speed of an upgrade is less granular control over workload disruption and slower rollbacks should you ever need to. So if your workloads are disruption sensitive and your priority is to have more control to mitigate risks during an upgrade, you might consider the other strategy built into GKE, blue-green upgrades. This upgrade strategy provides more control around promotion of new node versions and safer rollbacks. We can step through an example blue-green upgrade via its phases. We start in the first phase by creating an entirely new green set of nodes with the new versions of the nodes we want. More importantly, this set of nodes will be equal to the old blue node count right at phase one. In this example, we add three new green nodes to the node pool. Once those are ready and available, we step into phase two, cordoning old blue nodes. After all, we don't want newly created pods to be scheduled to old nodes only to be moved again, especially since we can utilize the free and allocatable capacity of the new nodes. Once we've cordoned off the old blue nodes, we can begin the process of draining them. This will flush any existing pods on those nodes, allowing them to reschedule to the new green nodes. And this is where we begin to get more granular control. We can define either an explicit number of old blue nodes to drain at a time, or an explicit percentage of old blue nodes to be drained at a specific time. This example shows what would happen if we drain nodes in batches of two until all of the old blue nodes are drained. We can also define a window of time to sit and wait before draining the next batch of nodes. This helps us move workloads to the new green nodes as slow as we want, all without having to worry about whether or not the capacity is available. It's also important to call out that we are not releasing the old blue nodes during this time. Workloads such as stateful workloads that need more time to shut down to do things like flushing memory to disk can now take that time on the old blue nodes. And if we wanted to roll back for any given reason, the old nodes will be uncordoned and quickly made available for workloads to schedule back to. Once that's done, we step into phase four, in which we can define a soak time duration. This lets us observe how all the workloads are behaving on the new nodes. And if we need to, we can quickly roll back workloads to the old blue nodes during this time, and we can even automate this process based on SLOs that we set in cloud monitoring. Now the default soak time is one hour, but we can bump this all the way up to seven days, giving us control to observe our workloads, especially ones with diurnal or spiky usage patterns. Once we've validated our workloads, we can promote the upgrade and release the old blue nodes that we no longer need. That is if there is still soak time left. The upgrade will also continue if the soak time expires. It is then that we finally release the old blue nodes by deleting them. With the upgrade complete, we are finally back at our stable baseline node count of three. As you can see, blue-green upgrades optimize for stability, availability, and risk mitigation. Resources are still there to roll back to as you validate your workloads on the new set of nodes. The trade-off in this case is the additional cost of doubling your node pool resources during the upgrade time. With that said, many will evaluate the cost of a slower rollback process for critical workloads 
and take that into consideration as well. Surge upgrades and blue-green upgrades optimize for different things. Surge upgrades are better for workloads where speed is more important to you at the cost of a little bit of disruption. Blue-green upgrades are better for workloads focused on stability, availability, and risk mitigation at the cost of running more nodes for the duration of the upgrade. The best part is, these are on a per node pool basis. In GKE, we understand that your cluster may have multiple profiles of workloads across multiple different node pools, so you can choose your upgrade strategies accordingly per node pool. Of course, there's more to follow up on to fully shape your upgrade strategy in GKE, like release channels, testing new versions of GKE in pre-prod clusters, and maintenance windows and exclusions. To learn more, stay tuned and check out the links in the description below. Thanks for spending this time with me, and we'll see you next time on GK Essentials.